Hello, and welcome back to a new exciting edition. Usually it's, you know, on a phone call podcast. I like it that way because I'm the voice of the Bulldogs sometimes, but now we have the actual faces of the Bulldogs. We got James Armstrong on Bully Soccer Bikes. Coach, welcome back. Thanks, Chris. We're moving with the times. Man, I feel like it's every, every single day we have a Zoom call, so why not keep going with this? Amen. I'm to get a cool background. You have a nice background in that office of yours right now. Absolutely. So, Coach, uh, for anyone who's not familiar, um, last night, last day, yesterday afternoon, the Southeastern Conference came out with a news release saying the show is going to go on. We're going to play fall soccer. How excited are you to do that? I mean, it was uh, a great day for us, obviously, to get some uh, clarity on what the season's going to look like, um, get some structure for our student athletes, um, you know, the, the leadership on campus and the leadership in the SEC have been working so incredibly hard to, to make this happen, you know, and, and obviously there's so many things that have to come in it. Most importantly, at the, at the forefront is the health and safety of our student athletes. So, you know, they've done a great job of, of managing to, to figure out what that's going to look like. Our team's super excited and, and, you know, ready to get on the field. And, and now that they have a start date to, to look towards um, and some clarification of what that's going to look like, um, it's, it's rock and roll forward. So we're, we're super excited, super relieved. Um, I think it's unbelievable that the SEC has given our student athletes an opportunity to play. Um, that's massive for them, and it, it just shows you why this is the, the best conference in the country. I guess you can say it really just does mean more, right? So let's, let's jump to the end of the season, because last year, in your first year as a head coach, you took the team all the way to Orange Beach, you know, the pinnacle. That's what everyone looks forward to in the Southeastern Conference. Hadn't been done in over 20 years, and you do it in year one. This year, you know, if everything goes according to plan, it's not going to be a question. We're going to go back to back because every team in the conference makes it and will play at least two matches. How do, you, how do you feel about that format? So I think just touching on the tournament a little bit as a whole, um, obviously it's the premier college soccer tournament in the country. To go down to Orange Beach, which is an unbelievable setting, uh, great competition, we're, we're treated so well there. They're great hosts. Um, you know, talking to a lot of our seniors um, in their exit interviews, that was the highlight of their soccer career. Um, so the team definitely wanted to get back there this year and, and make further waves into that tournament. You know, obviously we had a disappointing loss uh, in that first game. So the fact that we get down there, I think, is, is a, a just reward for all the hardship that they've put in, obviously with the result of, of covid um, you know, they've been kind of off right since March and then come back in June and, and working really hard. And not, un, not a, until yesterday, you know, there wasn't a great deal of clarity for what that's going to look like. So student athletes fr thrive on structure. So this is a, a, a Brucey bonus, as I call it. So we're obviously going to work hard to be as best prepared as we can for when we get down there. And like I said, hopefully we can go uh, even further than we did last year. So in order to get there, it looks like we're going to play an eight-match season yep. over an eight-week span. Going to be mostly Saturdays, some Fridays and Sundays mixed in. A lot of opportunities to play on the SEC network, on a digital network. So yep. for people who can't tell by the accent, Coach, you come from across the pond. This is more of like a premiership league, you know, professional-style soccer where you're playing one match a week. How do you like that setup now? Well, once again, going back to the leadership, I think it was uh... – a great decision by them to, to not put too much mental and physical stress on the student athletes. Um, it's really hard playing Friday, Sunday, and even Thursday, Sunday. So to get one match a week allows the players uh, appropriate time to recover after obviously being off for so long and now trying to ramp up for season. Um, you know, so that, that's going to be massive. And then for us, selfishly, it gives us longer, obviously, to prepare for the next opponent, uh, gives us more time to train for that next opponent, more to watch film, scout, do film review with our players. So we love this format. I, I, it's, it couldn't be any better. So we're, we're really excited about that. I know the players were very, very excited to hear that it's just going to be one game a week. Um, and obviously from a COVID standpoint, um, should anything goes, go wrong, which obviously we hope definitely doesn't, um, you know, they miss less games as a result. So our fans, longtime fans are familiar that at one point the soccer would play kind of like the football schedule does now. The SEC West and the SEC East kind of pushing back to those directions for the fall. So, you know, 
correct me if I'm wrong, you'll play the six other SEC West schools, and then you'll have two crossover matches. A lot of good talent on the West side. Are you looking forward to that schedule? Absolutely. This slide should be a first for me because since I've been in the league, there's never been East and West divided. Um, so from that standpoint, it's an exciting new challenge. Like you said, there's a ton of talent, um, a ton of rivalries um, in there. So every game in the SEC is a tough game, regardless of whether you're playing an East team or a West team. Um, there's an unbelievable amount of parity in this league. Every, lots of great coaches. Um, so from that standpoint, we're excited about the challenge and, and we're just happy to play. We'll play anybody at this moment in time. So We're excited for that going to be unique so we're, we're, so we we talked about the uncertainty so how were you able to keep your team focused and motivated these last we've been here three plus weeks back on the pitch how's it has it been tough to keep the team motivated and with a goal in sight when they didn't know was looking in front of them no because I'm fortunate that I have a great staff and I have a great group of players um they they voted unanimously and it was an anonymous vote that they wanted to have a season once they knew what all the parameters for that season is going to look like um, they've been working harder than ever. Um, my staff's been working harder than ever. So motivation, honestly, not once have we had to get onto them about, hey, you know, season could start in this time, this time or whatever. Um, they've done it all themselves. Um, are there challenges from the personal sacrifices that they have to make? Um, yes, because just like I'm sure every coach in this league is saying, um, you know, a lot of what the season's going to look like is going to depend on, um, sacrifices and decisions they make. You know, we're, we're in kind of an umbrella right now, um, which obviously is tough. You can't be a normal student. Um, you can't have that normal, particularly for the freshmen, you can't have that normal freshman experience of meeting people, you know, outside of your sport. So we're kind of in our own little umbrella, taking care of ourselves, um, knowing that, you know, those sacrifices uh, are going to be rewarded by, you know, like I said, having a season now and going down to Orange Beach and having the SEC tournament. So motivation hasn't been, hasn't been difficult. Um, just making sure that we understand what they're going through um, is important for myself and for my staff because even though they've embraced it wholeheartedly, we've got to understand that it's, it's definitely not easy. You know, we talked about all these scheduling and preparing. Uh, looking at the roster, you have some transfers. You have a good amount of transfers, but a young team as a whole, not many seniors, not even many juniors. You have a lot of underclassmen, a lot of transfers. And you talk about this normal. Has it been tough getting them to understand, you know, how Mississippi State soccer does things? No, I mean, when, when we, before we bring anybody onto our team, character is the first and most important thing that we look at. Um, so we knew what we were getting with each of the freshmen and all of those transfers. Uh, they, they've done an, an unbelievable job of not only fitting into what we're doing on and off the field, but um, enhancing it. Um, in fact, we just had our vote for captains the other day, and Alyssa Deloise, who was a transfer from Texas Tech, she came in in the spring, um, but had a little injury, so she didn't really play. Um, she's been voted in as captain, and she's been voting in our, on our leadership council, and she's just one example of many. Um, it's been a really easy transition uh, both in terms of them, you know, understanding what our style of play is, what our principles are, um, and what we need to do in the classroom. So I've been really proud of not only the new players, but how the returning players uh, have brought them into the fold and, and taught them what we're all about. So um, the transition has actually been a lot easier than, than we even expected and hoped. Coach, uh, looking back on last year and forward to this year after coming to see a practice or two, it felt like every match we went to last year, the opening thing would say, player to watch for, Michaela Waldner. You know, she's one of the most decorated players in school history. Yep. Had a great supporting cast behind her. But this year, Michaela's gone. But it seems like you have a lot more depth than last year. Are you looking forward to being able to sub a little more? You maybe tinker with the lineup. That's not the same thing every week. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, going back to Michaela Waldner, I mean, she scored 10 goals. Um, a, a great representative of Mississippi State soccer throughout her four years here course we're going to miss her right I mean it's hard to replace 10 goals but at the same time we feel we've got a, a, a heck of a lot more depth in terms of where goals um, and creating opportunities may come from so um, I do feel that even though we're young um, and we've got a lot of new players we're going to have a lot of depth um, and we're certainly not going to use young and new as an excuse um, we're working really hard and more importantly they're working really hard like we've already talked about to fit into the system and the style so we're really excited about what our attacking play is going to look like moving forward. So we'll miss Michaela. I wish she had another year of eligibility remaining, but uh, 
I feel like we're going to have a lot more different outlets to score goals this year. We're about a month away, less than a month away, about 20 Weeks days away. away. So what's the plan now? Now that you know it's there, uh, going to be one of the first sporting events in the conference, if not the first. What's the focus now in these next couple of weeks? Making sure we're ready, but not overdoing it. Um, making sure that mentally the players, uh, you know, get somewhat of a break. Uh, making sure that we're not overworking them physically. Um, you know, trying to temper that level of excitement to make sure we're peaking at the right time. Um, thankfully, staff and players have been kind of gearing towards September the 11th is kind of what we thought the start mate start date might be until about a week ago when we heard September the 18th. So nothing's really changed from that standpoint. Um, we'll start looking at what a starting lineup may look like, maybe a few more scrimmages than we've been doing before, but um, nothing too much is really going to change from, from what our preparations have been right now because we've kind of been ramping up to, to that date anyway. But tempering the players' excitement level and making sure we're not doing too little, but also at the same time not doing too much from a mental and physical standpoint. Awesome. Coach, don't want to go too much into the X's and O's right now. I'm sure we'll catch up again before the first match of the season. But any final words? Yeah, I actually do have something that's got nothing to do with X's and O's, Chris. A little birdie told me that you're getting married this weekend. Do you finally make <laughs> If she doesn't, <laughs> if she doesn't Beyonce's leave me first, Coach. Making an honest man of you. So I'd love to know, what, what's the uh, attire for the wedding this weekend? What are you wearing? I know that you're a big man when it comes yeah. to fashion, so... What are you wearing? I went, I'm going to go custom suit, little floral print uh, on the inside, uh, blue. I don't have much going for me, but my eyes pop with blue. So I'm going to go with blue. Um, Got to make it, let's see, 32 more hours, and then the rest will be history. Well, on behalf of the soccer family, we wish you and Jennifer the very best for your big day and uh, looking forward to hearing how it goes. I'm sure it will go well. Excited to see you, Coach. Well, as always, thanks for your time, and hail state, baby. Thanks, Chris. Hail state.